I'm from this Councillor Anissa Leach, and I'm the Chair of the Committee. We've got a problem with um, our screens in front of us uh, this evening, so if you have to look at the back of uh, my head on occasion from turning around to look, look at things, I do apologise. My role this evening is to ensure that the Committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour, and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the table here tonight are, to my immediate right is the Council Solicitor who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the council's planning officer, planning engineer and environmental officer, who will present the application this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualified decision, signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicants or their agent will also be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again, for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicants or their agents will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may be followed by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, then that matter will not be discussed this evening or will be discussed at a subsequent planning meeting. Okay? Committee, can I have approval of the minutes on pages 1 to 8, please? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, everybody in the group with those? Yeah. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? Chair, yeah, on the item 9, although they deal with that way the policy, um, where the debt are living on subsidies are the direct, um, the direct with the applicants, I would prefer a beneficial interest in the agreement. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, are there any requests for slight visits? Uh, we have a request to site visit uh, for uh, agenda item uh, 6, which is more police station. Okay, so, um, any others? Oh, are the committee happy to approve them? The site visit uh, will be on the 17th of October. Okay, um, for anybody who's here with an application, for application, which is uh, Chadwick Street uh, Police Station, we won't be discussing that any further this evening, so if you do want to leave, you can leave now, if you so much. Thank you. I will leave. <laughs> we'll put the 17th of October, we know. Okay, we'll be meeting at 10.15 at the uh, premises. 10.15 at Chadwick Street? 10.15. Thank you, Chair. As there's only one item for the Okay, if we can then move to um, agenda item 4, please. Lines at 4 at Old Tavern Club, which is on pages 9 to 16 of your uh, pack. If you have a presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. This application is being referred to the planning committee as a qualified petition containing 53 signatures and 30 individual letters and also the objections and also the receive. The objections can be summarised as insufficient parking, safety and vehicular access, loss of privacy in the room, loss of light, noise and disturbance from the interior. This is now by application for construction of 16 main two bedroom departments within a two and two and a half square block. Access layout, landscape and scale are to be determined at this stage with the appearance of the site as a future reserve plan this application. The application site is currently vacant. The site is within a primary residential area surrounded by predominantly two storey dwelling houses. The main issues to address when assessing this application is the impact of such a development on residential needs of the surrounding residents, the visual quality of the streets, 
Agency and in higher regions. A proposed building is T-shaped with the front of the site containing the tall sediment, reducing down to two storey within the site. The impact is to the site is from the Mount Lane uh, and is part of the site for 10 cars. In terms of residential community, the proposed use of the site for residential purposes is considerably less harmful than the previous use of the nightclub. Um, we should experience high level, levels of nighttime um, noise disturbance and antisocial behaviour. The previous building was fairly substantial in scale, with the tall sediment site in close proximity to the rooms of number 2 and 4 of Venice Avenue. The proposed windows on the front of the station are approximately 18 metres from the gables of one two green bank opposite the site. The windows on the proposed side elevations are 30 metres from the opposite Lenders Avenue and 15 from Magazine Avenue. This is less than the normal separation distance that is required with regards to those properties in Lenders Avenue. The first four windows, however, are within the roof space and are designed to similar to roof lights, which will allow for these openings uh, rather than to drop them into the adjacent properties. The established pattern developed in the surrounding area results in separation distances lower than those prescribed through council's policies. In terms of the concerns regarding insufficient parking, 10 spaces are proposed within the site. This is less than the number of units proposed, however, the site is within a sustainable location close to public transport, shops, <coughs> and other amenities. For these reasons, the proposal is considered to be acceptable and recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions, and 106 agreement to secure affordable housing. Um, and provision for maintenance agreement for future uh, sustainable development of claims systems. Thank you. And uh, for the people who've just arrived at the committee, uh, do you uh, decide if we're going to have a site visit on agenda item six, which is the Morton Police Station Chadwick Street? So we will be discussing that this evening. So if you have more facts in your application, uh, we will be discussing any further this evening so we can read the commission. Okay, uh, this, we do have a qualifying petition for agenda item four. Um, would the lead petition like to come forward to speak? Thank you, Chair. If I, could, if, sorry, if I could just ask you to uh, turn on your microphone, uh, state your name and address, and if you, if you have to five minutes to speak. Um, when you've got one minute left, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my, my name is Tony Pritchard of 192C Bank Road in Brighton. I'm actually uh, just really uh, the main petitioner who can't be here tonight because her apologies, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Hart. Uh, she's still at work, so she can't get here in time. So if she's given me something to read out, if I may. And also, can I just thank uh, the councillors and officers who took the time and the effort to come to the site visit? Uh, hopefully, you'll find it, you found it very informative and um, you saw the, the state of the roads. The parking. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, we believe to allow the separation distance to be reduced from the EDP recommended 21 metres to 13 metres would have a detrimental impact on privacy and the right to light at the houses of Lenox Avenue. It came up at the site visit that the development at the top of Magazine Road was allowed to go ahead with reduced separation distance, but this was not going to impact on the houses of Greenback Avenue, as this one would, as they don't have the same rooms at the back. Just because it has been allowed on one development does, it, does not mean it has to be a, applied to every application and they should be judged on their own merits. The previous building was commercial and almost roofless. The upper windows of the proposed two-storey leg were looked down into the windows of Lennox Avenue's even-numbered properties. This is because Lennox Avenue runs parallel and significantly below it. A communal garden stroke barbecue area it's intended to run in a narrow strip along the back of the boundary wall with Lennox Avenue. People in the communal area will be able to look over the wall and down into the gardens, backyards of Lennox Avenue. Could make unreasonable noise, engage in antisocial behaviour, without fear of comeback because it will be a communal area. So to address, address the perpetrators will be hard for local residents to establish. This, this is not a good location for a communal area. Events in this area and the noise they would generate would have no accountability. A privacy fence running on top of the wall is not an option because it would block light to habitable rooms in Lennox Avenue. Otherwise, a different location for the communal area is needed. Your handouts show that the build is generally in the footprint of the old town club. You can also see that the gable end of the section of the 
of the cross part of the T running behind the back of the substation comes within a couple of feet of the boundary wall of Lenox Avenue and Dobson's Bakery. What is not evident from your handouts is that the section of the old tavern club close to number two Lennox and Dodgins is only one story high, and number two Lennox has therefore enjoyed sunshine to the south facing rear of the property for more than over 20 years, sufficient to dry a washing, sunbathe, and grow flowers. Contrast this with the proposed plans which say the cross of the T will be three stories for the whole length. The massive gable end will appear like a cliff looming above Dodgins and two Lennox blocking the afternoon and the evening sun from both properties and particularly from two blanks, have small greens, and reducing their light at the rear of the property for the whole day. Local residents are first and foremost agreed that only 10 car parking spaces for the 16 dwellings, which will guarantee there will be an overspill of cars and impact on local parking. Local parking is already a breaking point. There is frequently free address parking against the surrounding full sets. There is tension between neighbours and even within households. Now this is from Mrs Hart. Per personally, my partner has experienced knife tyres and my son regular verbal abuse. What is causing most anger is that the new residents will be able to park in our roads if they can't be bothered to squeeze into the new site, but we will not be able to park in theirs. The development needs to be in keeping with other dwellings in the area, which are all terraced Turn of the century brick built. The nearby new built terrace on Rosa Street is an exception. In its favour, the Rosa Street development, while it may be low build quality, at least a terrace of set up dwellings with no common areas. Each dwelling, you have to that. Okay. Each dwelling has a separate garden, has, has, each dwelling has a private garden. The plan development will be an overdevelopment of the site. It cannot meet the need for its own amenities without significantly detrimental impact on surrounding dwellings. The outline plan site, 32 wheelbins lined up a shared boundary wall of the dwelling of Magazine Lane next to the entrance, exit of the new site. Bins would go out onto the pavement each week. This would cause a street closet obstruction, obstruction to local business next door and obstruction to pedestrians on the pavement. I'll leave a little bit here because we're running out of time, just go to the bullet points. We would ask that you refuse this application because of its overdevelopment of the site, not in keeping with the rest of the road, impact on privacy, loss of light to habitable rooms, lack of parking places with overstrung to adjoining roads, causing stress and impacting on the well-being of local residents. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just the application to follow the plan for Again, if I can ask you to turn on the microphone, there's a little part of that. Can you please say your name, your name, and address, and how to buy the city? Yeah, I'm Peter Forrest with um, 11 Addison House, um, Wilson Street, um, and I'm a design and build contractor and surveyor, um, or a consultant for the, uh, the applicant. Um, so, uh, this application was submitted following lengthy and detailed discussions with the planning department to establish a consensus as to a viable development of a scale and quality that can both complement and enhance this residential area. Thus, the planner's report recommends approval of this outline application related to access, layout, landscaping and scale. The report confirms that the previous old tavern building was substantial in scale with the tallest part of the original tap chapel imposing directly onto the boundary with numbers 2 and 4 on its avenue and higher than our proposal by some 2 metres. Whereas the front two and a half storey section of this application terminates before the houses on Lennox Avenue as can be seen from the pegging out on site. Indeed the planning report makes clear that there are no significant issues related to overlooking or to loss of amenity, while the proposed scale fits with the established pattern of development in this area. Notably to the west, the elevated position of the houses in Magazine Avenue limits any impact related to the two-storey elevation of the rear mews, while to the east, 
the elevation facing the houses in Lennox Avenue is designed with the first floor within the roof space of a mansard construction. In effect, Velux roof lights in a low pitched roof will pr produce a view onto the roofs of those houses with the skyline behind them. The site faces south to the rear, with the sun moving east to west, so light into the garden and yard areas of the houses and the adjacent side roads will not be affected. The planner's report confirms that the spacious amenity areas of the east side is neutral to the amenities of adjacent houses in Lennox Avenue, a situation that no doubt can be augmented further with careful landscaping and screening on a detailed application. There's a further, sorry, there's a separate pedestrian walkway to the entrance alongside the five metre wide drive through to the rear mews, where there is ample turning room to the 10 car parking spaces, plus an area of some 20 square metres for cycles. In effect, this gives an off-street parking ratio far above the norm in an area well served by public transport and local amenities. An area of 10 square metres is allocated for communal bulk storage of waste and recyclable materials. Essentially, we're replacing a non-conforming use which, to quote the planner's report, had a significantly harmful impact on the neighbouring properties with a high quality development designed to enhance this locality while minimising impact to neighbouring houses. In confirming the planner's recommendation to grant outline planning permission, I will quote from their report, the development makes good use of a brownfield field site. Thank you. Thanks very much. The Water Council So my view would be that because of separation distances in particular and because of 
the overdevelopment that I see in this site. This is not an acceptable solution to the need to build residential properties in that area. But I would be very, very happy if the uh, applicant came back with something a little bit uh, lower in scale, smaller in scale, if you like, that would uh, provide the right sort of solution for this particular site. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, David. Thanks. Thanks, David. I like uh, Councillor Ellison. I found the site particularly useful. Uh, it's clearly on paper. It looks okay on paper when you're looking at it, uh, reading it in the comfort of your own home, but when you get to the site, uh, it's quite clear that this is, um, to use the words that have been used by uh, Tony Pritchard and Councillor Jones, uh, overdevelopment. Now, overdevelopment is a word that we found here around quite a bit when we look at these planning applications, but I was interested uh, to hear uh, the, the comments that were provided uh, by Tony Pritchard from Mrs Hart when she said that 10 parking spaces were being provided. Uh, for 16 apartments. Uh, in other words, those six uh, other apartments will presumably have to park on the road, uh, taking up already valid car parking spaces in the last premium at that location. And also the point that other residents in the area can't park in the 10 spaces that will be provided by this development. So I do have concerns that where the applicant, Mr. Forrest, said that this would have, I think it minimises the impact to neighbouring houses, I think were his words. I think particularly parking doesn't minimise the impact. I think that, that, that this application exacerbates the problem in that area already. Uh, and certainly the comments that Councillor Elson made in terms of uh, development, I like the Councillor Elson. I think we are here partly to try and uh, improve the area for people who live there. And I think if we have accepted as a council, the property should be 24 metres uh, or more uh, uh, apart uh, to increase the immunity value for people who live there. I don't see why we should break that uh, for this particular application tonight. It could well be that the applicant comes back to propose fewer, fewer units on this site to enable more parking spaces with uh, greater separation distances. But certainly, this application, as it stands, for the reasons that have been outlined by uh, Tony Pritchard and Councillor Jones, I would be minded to vote against. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Uh, yeah, it's it's more a comment and uh, still remain open minded about, about the application. It really is uh, saddens me actually. Um, given the, the debate we've had as an authority around having to build more houses uh, and also want to protect green belts and, and other open spaces, that between a developer and planning officers, we've not been able to put the sounds there. We've been able to come up with a totally acceptable development in a residential area for what is known in the trade as a windfall site. So when we put the close down a <coughs> windfall site, that should take the pressure off other pieces of land that, that can be developed. And we don't seem to have been able to come up with a, a win-win situation. Uh, and that saddens me uh, to a great degree because I think developers will quote these type of applications and say, well, if you can't deliver, you can't deliver your housing in these type of sites, where are you going to deliver them? And, and I think that, that it, it, it's a, a sad thing that we have been presented with an application that doesn't tick all the boxes at this point. Thanks. Thanks, uh, thanks Chair. As um, the World Council on the I'm open to use the committee on <coughs> the residents, but more importantly, uh, we want to make them mind up. But, but just a few um, points of the challenge. Certainly over the years, um, we've had decisions for law uh, from local residents in this area um, uh, regarding the old um, uh, town. This is the 60s, the old town, and certainly it had a checkered history, so at least. And in later years, it caused an awful lot of problems for, I don't think, for, for local residents with antisocial behaviour and all the sorts going on. Um, but, I would have thought a development of this kind, um, which is what I think the residents wanted. They wanted the old light pole closed down and they wanted something uh, in its place, hopefully uh, a nice development uh, which fits in with the surrounding, because it is a dense residential area around there, as we saw when we, when we went around uh, that area when we had the site visit. Uh, and I would have thought that this would have fitted in. I can understand having said that. Residents' concerns that um, uh, there's too, as we heard, there's too many um, uh, um, houses, houses as part of it, and this 
separation sites. But you know, uh, as the just just playing the devil's advocate, as the um, sort of developer said, uh, he said uh, earlier, he said it's previously higher. The previous building was higher, impacting much more on the surrounding area. And when we look on page eleven as well, for instance, board points uh, the previous building was. The separation, the, the impact of the development, uh, the fact that this, the, the general building is too many, maybe reduce it down to, to, a, few, to a few less. Um, and also, the other one, of course, is, is the parking. But you know, um, Councillor Eldon said he, he doesn't care about what happened around the corner, but I think that is relevant. But the development around the corner from this, which we knew, but that, but that we saw it on the day, uh, it does have an impact in some ways. Um, and I asked, the officers about the proposed yellow line that want to go outside that development around the corner, which would have had an impact on this. Uh, and the officers, obviously, uh, uh, they, they, they said that there would be uh, no yellow line except a couple because there's a refuge in the middle of the road, so people have to get across where the cars parked in. So, so that greatly assured me. But, but you know, um, overall, um, uh, open to listen to what people say uh, and I think I think really uh, the overall feeling from, from residents is that um, we can do with less on, on this site and the uh, parking is is an issue. Just one more point if I can say regarding the parking. I mean the officers uh, say on this that they um, they have listened and taken on board issues uh, regarding highway safety. The magazine lane as we know is a very, very busy road. Uh, it's a main road and the buses go up and down there. How would buses get around that corner beyond the sometimes the size of the buses? Uh, but the officers say they're including a new vehicle act, the vehicle access uh, and one of the conditions that we look sets out the report. And I think so, the conditions are very good um, and, 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 and I think that, that will help in terms of this development. But the development is needed there, it really is. And, and I think yeah. We need to be mindful of it, but I'm going to listen to the debate and the views on this. Thank you. Thank you. Can we just have some clarification about the yellow line, please? Okay, thank you for you, Chair. Yeah, the the uh, other application that um, we were talking about on Rosen Street, um, the um, five, six, uh, Properties that let up there recently. Um, there was a condition on that on that approval for some weighting restrictions. Um, we went through the full consultation with that, obviously, um, you know, people were concerned about the, the loss of parking from the uh, WL lines. So, what, what we did um, in consultation with, um, with, with uh, the objectors was we reduced the length of those WL lines so that they basically now they just protect the drop crossing from the pedestrians. Um, where vehicles shouldn't park anyway. So rather than be, um, I think they're going to be two or three vehicle lengths long, they're going to be four metres long, just to protect the, the actual drop curve that people cross. Thanks for clarification. David, Just a very quick one, and in response to what Pastor uh, Hackett said, I think, I think I made the wrong impression by saying I don't care. I do care very greatly. What I mean was, I don't think it was relevant to this application, what has happened to the other one, I to it. just wanted to make that point back. That's all right. Thank you, Chair. Any other comments from anybody? No? Well, the officer's uh, recommendation is to approve the subject to the conditions listed. Do we not want to move for this? So, to approve it? To approve it. Sorry, so you have got a point today. To move yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't realize. Sorry. So you would like to move refusal? Yes, I'd like to move. Okay, I'm happy. I'd like to move second. Yeah, I've got to be a bit of a scare. Refusal, you have to put a heavy counsel. Yeah. I'd like to move refusal, Chair, on the grounds that the property, the proposal is over.
development within the existing residential area uh, due to the impact it would have on uh, the council's uh, declared separation distances uh, and also the impact it will have on parking in the area. Okay, so um, Ian's moved refusal and Patrick has second that. All those in favour of refusal? So that's unanimous. Okay, thank you.
screen chair. Yes, um, dot one, um, which is the one to the north of the other site. Um, that's, it's not moved further away from the 16, but it's moved further away from the rear. It projected beyond the rear um, at two or three storey. The element that projects from the rear now is only single storey, flat roof, and it projects a few metres, which is in line with the kind of extension we have on the line of the house.
the main one is that up until 10 days ago, there was a second planning application uh, in addition to this one. And that was to demolish the municipal building directly across the road and to uh, construct a car park there with over 100 car parking spaces. So up until 10 days ago, there was two applications, both of which I asked to be taken out of delegation. That one has been taken out because the building is going to be sold for residential development. The problem is that we're now justifying this application on the basis that the other, the other car park is going to be lost, therefore staff need to use this new car park. So there's a real, there's a, there's a lot of confusion in my mind as to what exactly is going on. The council was applying to demolish two buildings, convert them both into car parks, and uh, now it's justifying the remaining application on the basis that the, uh, the, the other building across the road is going to be used for residential development and no longer convert into a car park. So that to me is, is very confusing. Um, secondly, we're told that it's not intended to be a car park forever. Okay. Thirdly, <coughs> as you said, Chair, uh, currently up to 50 staff use the existing municipal building car park. The new car park on this site <coughs> contains, I thought it was 81, the officer said 75, one of the other is 75 to 80 car parking uh, spaces. So that is a net increase in the parking provision in the area. And this is an area very well served by public transport. It's a couple of minutes walk, walk to two railway stations, uh, five minutes walk to Birkenhead uh, bus station. There is also a very significant existing parking provision within the area and officers have given me a summary as follows. Now within a quarter of a mile radius from this site there are uh, 700 approximately 700 public car parking spaces, 420 council staff car parking spaces and approximately 500 private car parking spaces. Uh, in addition there's pay and display of on-street parking around 350 spaces. I don't think anybody who knows this area, certainly I do, would say that there's a lack of parking provision in and around the Hamilton Square uh, area. So, what I think the applicant should be doing is setting out the reason why it is reasonable to increase parking provision within this area, um, which is contrary to our existing policies in terms of encouraging sustainable uh, transport and active travel. They should be setting out a clear reason why that is justified, but they're not doing that. They're just knocking down the building saying they turn it into a car park um, without making any kind of allowance for what existing provision is in the area and whether that is sufficient to meet uh, the, the additional demand they claim is required. Uh, and take into account as well the, um, the very good provision of public transport in the area. So really what I think we should be doing is sending this back the applicant and say, come up with a much more robust, well argued case for why you want to increase harm provision in an area where there is already very significant harm provision. Thank you, Pat. Anybody else want to make a comment? Skate? Okay. Thank you. Um, I just was a quick question. Uh, Amanda, something from Planning Fair in that particular, just, just do you actually need planning permission for demolition? So, if we follow Councillor Cleary's lunatic um, assault.